Thank you, Pravi. Uh, good morning, everybody. Sorry that I'm late. I didn't join the meeting yesterday, but uh, I'll try to catch up in 15 minutes, hoping the red light won't blink between the fin before I finish. I'll, I'll focus more on the Thai UC because as uh, Marty has given a very good recap, many of the information that I have prepared has also been discussed. Uh, I'll be re linking to some of the issues that you discussed yesterday as well as I go along. Uh, as I said, you know, I'll be focused only on the, on the first one, not the other three. Okay, uh, this is a brief introduction to Thailand, a very uh, small country, not too small, but uh, 67 million people. Uh, our GDP is not uh, very high, uh, and the growth rate is also not doing uh, as good as it used to be in the, in the 90s period. Uh, health status is uh, relatively uh, better comparable to the so-called uh, comparable economic status, uh, country economic status. In terms of health system, health system is a very important part to understand when we are doing the UC review in Thailand, because as Marty mentioned, uh, in Thailand, we don't start with financing, we start with system development. The financing issue came, came a, bit, a bit later, but having had that opportunity to develop the system uh, gradually, I mean, thanks to our so-called forefathers of the public health system in Thailand, we have managed to have the system laid out at various levels, uh, from the so-called grassroots level, which is a health center at the Tambon level. Tambon has about 5,000 population on the average. And then moving up, actually the, the system kind of, you know, meet in, in, in the middle, we have the health center first 70 years ago, and then we have the provincial hospitals about 40 years back, and then the district hospital as a bridge between about 35 uh, years back. So that just to give you a very uh, brief uh, recap. And we also have tertiary hospitals in universities and in some of the so-called uh, provinces, and of course the private sector. In terms of proportion, private sector account for about 30, 30% of the total health, uh, health system providers in Thailand. Oops. Uh, in terms of financing uh, evolution, this graph shows that you know, we, it, it's, it's a long route. Starting in 1975, when we had the so-called indigent card policy for the poor. Uh, that was not a, an insurance-based uh, policy. It's a public sector-based uh, uh, policy, where poor people are allowed to access and have poor uh, free services at only to the public sector, but public sector is the biggest providers in, in Thailand, especially in the rural area. So there, there's not much of a problem from that point of view that you know, access will be limited, but it gave the public sector a very good opportunity to uh, evolve the so-called uh, service delivery capability. Just to give you a very brief background, I started my career as a district hospital officer about 37 years back when the district hospital was first established. On the first year, it was very bad. I have, no, I have no money, I have no staff. But by the third year that I left my first district hospitals, things changed tenfold. And when I get to my second district hospitals, things are very much different. Nowadays, totally different from what I used to be in, the, in uh, 37 years ago. So that's a gradual improvement. District hospitals to me is one of the very crucial uh, evolution in the system where it, it helped to, to, to build the bridge. I don't have a graph to show you, but the so-called uh, Service access has been reversed from our patients going more to the bigger hospitals, to the health centers and the district hospitals, and, uh, uh, merging more into the so-called uh, broad-based uh, utilization access because of the district hospital evolution. This graph shows the financing part, which is the latter part of the, of the graph that shows that in terms of financing for health, health system, because of the UC policy, the government decided to spend a large amount of money at the tax base insurance uh, policy. And then when we, when we had the UC policy, we did away with the so-called access to the poor policy. So it become the poor plus the others. Part of the reason being what Marty has mentioned is the impoverishment of the illnesses, what we call the catastrophic insurance. That has also given the concern for us to start the UC policy. A brief overview, as I mentioned, you know, we started in 75. Uh, in terms of actually managing money on an insurance base, we don't have that much uh, uh, experiences, but we did have the civil servant medical benefit scheme, which provide free medical services for the civil servants as an example to start with, because we kept monitoring them and we found that the so-called spending of this scheme has been excessive, and partly because of the retrospective reimbursement on a fee-for-service basis that made it a very trouble, troublesome. Then in 1990, we had the social security system where we started the so-called the first per capitation prospective payment financing model that we learned from. And then when we gradually we started to 
uh, one of my colleagues, Dr. Sungwonit Yarampong, who uh, Marty and her team uh, referred to in, in, the, in the participatory uh, process, policy process uh, paper, is the one who has been advocating for the UC policy. He managed to uh, assemble teams and then we, we did research and try to uh, design what we would like to see if we have a UC policy for Thailand based on the per capita prospective payment system. And we start, succeeded in about, in about 13 years ago with a new government coming into power to, to establish the systems, uh, hoping that you know, it will be uh, uh, the big system that will also integrate the other two systems. So right now we have about uh, three, uh, system, three system altogether that has been trying to uh, work together I'll, 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 I'll skip this to uh, very quickly, just to say that you know we have a very uh, important approach, as I say, where we try to make sure that the money comes from the government, but also, as Marty mentioned, the civil, civil society has played a very important role in establishing the system. So the system has been very much trying to address the needs of the poor. Equity, efficiency, and quality has been the so-called three main concerns that we have been trying to achieve. This is a population covered. You will see the majority of the population is now being covered by the main UC uh, schemes. In terms of the population base, you can see that the uh, workers are the majority that has been also covered. Although we have the social security system, which is a formal sector system, it covers only about uh, one quarter of the population covered by the UC policy. Uh, this is the spending that we have been uh, achieving. You know, we, the spending, the government financing through the tax has increased. Uh, uh, tremendously over the 13 years period, from uh, $25 per capita to 45%, uh, $45 per capita for the outpatient. And for the inpatient, it has also been increasing. You may notice that the inpatient has been uh, uh, more or less uh, a little bit uh, catching up more and more. And we started to be worried because we want more money to be spent on primary care rather than on in, uh, hospital services. In terms of benefit package, there's a continuous evolution of what we covered. Uh, basically, you know, just to give you a, a, a very uh, a brief idea, basically we started the UC policy with whatever available in the public sector. And as I say, because we have the opportunity to develop the public sector for a, a very long period, the benefit package covered has been quite uh, comprehensive. Rather than having a so-called benefit package, we have more uh, what, what, I, what I would like to call exclusion list. In other words, everything is covered unless it is excluded. But of course, there are certain things that uh, fall in the gap. So the, the benefit package the subcommittee has to gradually clarify certain things. For example, ARV and renal uh, dialysis has been two of the very important issues at the very beginning, whether we covered it or not. And then gradually, because of the health economics study and because of the lobbying of the civil society groups, these two benefits has been added. And then gradually, we do some kind of a cost-benefit analysis. We have a, a unit called High tap health, health innovation technology assessment uh, program, doing some of the so-called uh, new technology assessment, try to see whether it should be included or not, and then gradually we try to include uh, different things. Some may, some may seem you know a bit outrageous for you, but uh, uh, transplantation, for example. But those has been some of the issues. Uh, uh, cardiac surgery has been also one of the issue whether we cover it or not. We say you know practically it is covered, but. Uh, people start complaining about the cost uh, implications, so there were studies and there were a uh, special allocation. Finally, we, we have to have separated funds for certain important things. HIV has a separated fund. Uh, renal dialysis has a separated fund. The, the rest would go into the more uh, so-called uh, basic benefit package, even though they are not that basic, as I, as I mentioned. But there's also a separated fund for prevention and promotion because we wanted to make sure that we don't lose sight of the prevention and promotion investment. And the committee made, made sure that prevention and promotion has increasing share. Although we have difficulties arguing with the, with the, with the Ministry of Finance because for, for many of us who are in the so-called uh, health system management, we all know that it is easier to account for inpatient services rather than preventive and, and promotive services. And we had a very in interesting remark from the economist that, you know, you produce something like a DRG for us, and you get more money for primary care. But of course, we don't have an ambulatory DRG very well developed for those of you who have been dealing with the financing part of the health system. This is a graph to show you that, you know, the, we have two separated uh, big organizations. One is the Ministry of Health, which has been doing their jobs in, in the past through public uh, 
budgeting system. When we created UC, we had a separated organization as a purchaser called National Health Secretary Office and NHSO, which is on regional offices doing the purchasing part. So the purchaser provider split is in the system with a very rough relationship because basically if you look at the, the UK, NHS system is not that uh, clearly separated. In the Thai uh, system, it has been separated. But the more important thing is that uh, we use community. Uh, uh, we use the so-called PCU as the so-called uh, uh, key provider for the rural population and for most of the beneficiaries in Thailand, including the informal sector. And we have a, we have a concept called contracting unit for primary care, which is basically district or community hospitals holding the funds to make sure that they, 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 they pay for the primary care uh, providers, as well as doing the service linkage, uh, referring to the, to the bigger hospitals. So we we'll expect the CUP or the CUP to be the very important, crucial uh, so-called providers in the, in the Thai system. And the majority of the CUP belong to the Ministry of Public Health in the rural area. Uh, basically, it's just very easy to, 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 to say that all non-municipality uh, uh, district in Thailand has, private, has no private sector. Very, very easy to say that. It's basically a public, public uh, sector. And we also have what we call community funds. And I, I assume that uh, Arapan mentioned yesterday also that it has been one of the very small funds at the community level for the community to work with the so-called uh, purchaser and the providers to make sure that there are more uh, actions on social determinants of health. This is the result, you know, the utilization of services in, uh, increased and it put a lot of strains both outpatient and inpatient, especially for the public sector uh, uh, workers. Just to give you some ideas, you know, the per capita uh, utilization increased from about 2.5 to about 3.5 per person per year over the last uh, 12 years. Inpatients did the same thing. So it put strain on both the so-called uh, uh, workload and finance. But uh, uh, let, let me backtrack a little bit on, on the financing part because this has been one of the issues. Thai has the, the Thai system has the privilege of accumulating so-called hospitals and health, and health services revenue over the last 70 years because we have a system whereby user's charge could be imposed and the user's use charge would be retained for each individual hospital. So when the UC system came in, then per capita payment is not that you know, well financed. At least hospitals depend on the, on, the, on the user's charge to continue their services. So we don't have a acute, your abrupt system breakdown that we anticipated when we started that uh, 13 years ago because we anticipated at that time that with the reserve at that time, we will be able to sustain the system for only three years. But in any way, it has continued for th 13 years. From the quality, quality point of view, we have a system whereby we try to do accreditation of service uh, facilities. And the so-called accreditation system has improved, you know, more moved to the yellow and the green one, which are the uh, better accredited uh, uh, System. In terms of satisfaction survey, we have an interesting uh, survey uh, carried out every year, although we, we, we debated a lot. You will find that you know, for the so-called page, for the people, the satisfaction quite, has been quite high since the very beginning and has been sustained there. For the provider, it's, it's, a, it's a rather different story. Actually, provider has a lot of uh, uh, problems at the, at the beginning because they were concerned of you know, increasing workload and some of the so-called other things, and there has been one of the conflict things. In Thailand, we set up a, a, a fund which we wanted to be a so-called no-fault compensation fund just to make sure that, you know, with the, with the increasing workload, the so-called uh, problem, unexpected consequences won't be brought to court too to, to, to much. But it has created also a lot of concern for the provider that it will be a starting point for more cases being brought to court. So there are two, two, two sides of the, of the same coin. Uh, but I just wanted to tell you that the provider satisfaction or Apprehension has also uh, uh, apprehension decrease and satisfaction has started to, to improve, but not 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 very well. We do still have this problem of convincing providers. But as I say, you know, uh, public providers in Thailand has been very, I would say, very generous, very very uh, very uh, very good. At least they complain, but they never stop working. That's one of the good things that I that I kept telling our colleagues. That uh, to me, you know, I I, I was one of the very very uh, critical people when, when we started the system, although I have been involved with the system design, I was, imp I was concerned about the implementation part, and I believe that we, don't, we have a very quick or too quick implementation at the very beginning because of this concern, but it has been shown to be, to be wrong. Uh, 
in terms of the so-called spending, as you say, the spending of the government has increased. I won't go into detail, but uh, just to say that uh, the Minister of Finance has been very concerned and has been trying to cap the proportion of the public spending because we have, we have shifted from 45% uh, public spending to 65% public spending uh, with, with the so-called overall increase of the overall healthcare financing uh, expenditure for, for, for a long time. But uh, they have been trying to cap to, to 50% and we still have to debate why 50% because from the projection point of view, we, we projected in the, in the next 20 years, if we keep on this, this pattern, our total health expenditure will not exceed 6% of the total GDP, which is not too bad compared to what we have been able to achieve. But we have been able to reduce the out-of-pocket payment of the population. And the other thing is that we try, we, we, we have evidence to show that it has helped to prevent some of the health impoverishment, in other words, catastrophe insurance. Incidents have been uh, prevented. This is the graph just to show that, you know, without the UC, uh, the incident of catastrophic health spending would be following the red line, but we have been able to uh, get it down to the green, the green line. And in terms of household prevented, from health impoverishment, it, we have also been able to uh, improve the situation a lot. Uh, I just wanted to, to use my last few minutes to say that I'm saying all this with the, with the view that the majority, or I would say all the for informal sector workers is covered in this part. And one of the issues, as Marty has mentioned, that you have discussed yesterday is that this has a lot to do with curative services. The so-called informal health workers, health risk intervention, has not been there. It's still something very much on a, on, a, on a pilot project basis, on innovation basis. I have prepared some slides to, to share with you, but I presume that Aurapan has also mentioned something that she has been working, and she told me this morning that she spent only 2 million baht a year. We are spending 1.2 billion baht a year for, uh, I'm sorry, 120 billion baht a year for the, all, for the whole UC, for the 45%. Uh, uh, for, the, for the 45 million uh, population. So two million is very, very, very small. I happen to be the, the chair of the so-called preventive promotive uh, working group. So I think that we, in terms of adding this into the, into the system, we had two challenges, one the financing one, and maybe it would be worth uh, creating one of the so-called separated funds for the informal worker prevention promotion. But on the other hand, the system reorientation, the capability building, would be one of the challenge as well. Uh, but again, you know, this is one of the, one of the things. We have been facing NCDs, we have been facing elderly problems, and now you know, the issue of the so-called new challenges for the informal workers has come in because of the new industry and new, new uh, work, uh, working environment. But uh, to me, I would say that the, thanks, to the, thanks to the foundation that we have laid down in the Thai health system, we have been able to try to innovate and to re reinvent ourselves a little bit to cope with all these challenges. So the health system reorientation, the health system capability building, we really wanted a bigger challenge compared to the financing one. Because the financing one, we can always do some of the reallocation and recalculation a little bit. And I'm, I'm very sure that uh, with the community fund, with the increasing uh, roles of the, of the local uh, government, we will be able to try to, to try to see how we could use the so-called local government funds with the reorientation of the UC funds to increase the so-called uh, motivation and capability of the health system. So I will leave you with that, uh, hoping that this is something useful for for us to discuss further in terms of uh, creating a financing system with the healthcare uh, services uh, strengthening as two integral parts that go along uh, all the way together, not to mention about the fact that the so-called beneficiaries has also been one of the active players in this process since the very beginning. Thank you very much.